Okay. Welcome to the uh, third public session of the Board of Commissioners. Today's date is Monday, February 6, 2017. And Mr. Secretary, if you would please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Here. Mr. McCluskey. Here. Mr. Siegel. Dan. He's here. Yep. Mr. Siegel. Uh, Mr. Lewis is here. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. McGarity. Here. Mr. Wexler. Here. Mr. Oliva. Here. And Mr. Connell. Here. Chief, would you lead us in Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. First on the agenda this evening, uh, we did meet in a uh, executive session prior to this meeting to discuss a personnel a matter. And first on the agenda, Ms. Widop, do you want to introduce or you just want to go right into the construction manager update? She's not even here. We're going to go right into go the right update. In <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Ryan Brennan with Reynolds Construction, the construction manager for the uh, new municipal services building. Um, at the last meeting, it kind of reported that uh, we had a target date set with the contractor after a meeting the, with the general contractor to start the structural steel um, January 17th, and that was kind of a milestone we were working towards. We did hit that date. Now our upcoming next milestone is the completion of that steel, which we anticipate to be the end of this month. Um, Larry took uh, some drone footage of the site on Friday, um, so that'll give everybody, I'll, I'll kind of walk through it as the camera goes through it and uh, be able to give you an update on the progress of the work that's occurred to date. Okay, this is this is currently right now at the police building, um, just outside of it, right before going into the construction site. Who's the pilot? You don't know, don't know who the pilot is. Um, as you can see to the right, it's which probably most people have already seen, is mm -hmm. the uh, completed parking for the stadium. Um, to the left, the masonry structure that's up out in the center. That's the elevator shaft there. Um, you can see the concrete foundation walls. The black is the waterproofing that's on them. And then there's the blue recovery board that gets placed bef right before they backfill, which you can see like there. The see a portion of that. Of course, it's to the south. It's the back end there. You can see on the first story, the, next to the elevator shaft is where the mechanical room and then the electrical room will be going in. There's a lot of electrical underground rough in. That's where the electrical duct bank kind of cuts through. You can see the stone pathway through where the electrical main feeders go. Another shot from the parking lot. Uh, uh, where you can see the structural steel, they start it in the area. The lower areas are the cells. So they actually place the slab on grade in those areas. Um, and the masonry for the cells so that they could put the planking on top because that had to be installed prior to the structural steel. The structural steel is installed. They're installing the metal deck for the elevated slab area, the second story for the administration area of the building. Area that's still um, without steel is kind of where the locker rooms are. And the offices are on the opposite side of that. You can see the white stub ups coming out of there. That denotes where all the locker room spaces are there. Um, currently, right now, all of the underground plumbing within the building itself is done. Underground electric, they're still working on. They expect going out to, to, the, to the pole for the main service by the end of the week with completion of all their feeders. And then they'll just have to follow up with the stone, which is going to occur after they place all the slab on deck on, on the building. Work uh, towards the street, they're, they're building, uh, they placed the footing, and then they're gonna do following up with the retaining wall. Drive by there now, the, the forms are up for uh, concrete placement for the retaining wall. 
any wall that comes off of the building there where the generator is going to go. That, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Larry. <laughs> you see where the retaining wall is uh, right now as it comes around. See where the existing fence is for the wall field? <coughs> the same location. Um, currently, yes, for, just for, for a little bit more time, yes. How close will it come to the building? I do not recall off the top of my head. I can get back to you with that answer. Hitting the building? So that baseball baseball field will remain where it is. Yeah, it's my understanding that it is. Yes. Won't those? Won't you we'd be taking foul balls into the into the windows? Iron fence. Well, there'll be fencing. That would uh, iron fence there. Yes. So so how how far behind schedule are we? And I guess my question follow up question would be if we're X number of months behind schedule, it appears to be about six people working there and maybe two pieces of equipment. So why aren't there more people and more equipment? Um, there, ha there have been a lot more workers on site and uh, more equipment moving. Obviously, when structural steel is <coughs> being installed, they have a swing radius, so they take <coughs> up a good portion of the area. And due to safety reasons, you can't get in there. Um, the project is behind schedule. There, uh, we're evaluating a uh, claim made by the contractor for an extension of time that they have requested. Um, we will have that response back to them. Um, there were some items that were unforeseen that did impact the progress, um, but there's some items that are on them as well that they need to recover some of that lost time. Ryan, I've, uh, sitting here and looking there, I couldn't tell you, you know, if you had a dozen guys there or half a dozen guys, you know, as far as progress goes. But we were told at one point it was 81 days. Has that increased? With the contractor's latest schedule that they've submitted, it has increased, yes. It stayed right around there. It's at about 87 days currently right now. Okay. Thank you. Why? What are the issues? Just they, what he just said. I think we're waiting for that report. Right, right. They've requested an extension of time for 72 days, which they've obviously admitted to the other days would be on them. Um, but there were some items that were at the beginning of the project that they've impacted that they're stating that that has um, pushed them out to that level. Um, we have worked with the, um, the solicitor, with the township, and with the architect to get that response back to them this week. Um, per the contract documents, the initial decision maker has to respond, and that's the architect in this case. So he has all the information on what we believe is a reasonable extension of time that they should be granted due to things that were out of their control that were impacted through uh, in the beginning of the construction project. And um, it is not what they're asking for, but it is a number of days. When, when will we know what those major issues are? Because I have to be frank with you. We're lucky we didn't have snowstorms. We're lucky we're having the winter we're having because you really would be behind. I think there's, I mean, I would love to know what those reasons are. Um, well, I, mean, I think this board needs to wanna, know as soon as possible. I mean, that be something to list at a, at a public meeting, or would you want to talk? Mr. Solicitor? Yeah, I think. Do you want to weigh in on this? I, I think I'd probably, probably rather talk to uh, first and then see just because I don't know what, what all the answers are going to be. So. <coughs> If it's going to be something that's part of litigation, I don't know that I want to be discussing it in the public forum right now. I get that, but I agree with Andy. I mean, you look at that, you don't see a lot of construction people at that site. And it's not, you're not talking about a huge building that's that far behind. I mean, you're talking about another 72 days. It's, it baffles me. Now we have bad weather coming possibly on Thursday and possible snow coming. I mean, you're going to put you behind even further. Is that field, another question, is the field... The field won't be impacted by this, right? They'll be able to still use that field. Is that correct? Not this year. No. Oh, no, that's right. They're not. That's right, yeah. You so see now, that now. trench going right across there. The what? You see that trench going right across there. Yeah, I saw and it. I believe that's, that's, that's recreation. Is that, Tim, is that? It's, uh, that would, would handle it? The meeting with Lori and some people. I don't know if you're able to come to the meeting Thursday night. Yes, the night. Thanks. 
Is there any concern for um, any kind of water problem? Because it looks like it's the grade all slopes down pretty severely uh, to the building. So is it? Like the city. Is there any water inside the building? No, I mean everything's waterproofed. All the concrete walls and everything. So we'll everything. never have any problem with water. <laughs> There's a foundation drain in there. So I mean, you did both. You did you did the waterproofing and you did a foundation drain. And that will so, assure us that I mean, we don't that's, get any water. Yeah, that's. You know, above and be, you know, it's belt and suspenders basically you did on the building and what you can do in that type of situation. You really are on ahead. So there is an area all the way down by bottom. Manoa and Columbia that been down there for quite some time. Yeah, is, one is there, I know I saw an inlet, a storm drain sure. inlet there, but is that also a retention area? Um, it's it's just in its temporary stage right now during the construction and then it gets built up in the sequence. So yes, it will be a a more of a basin, and then there's another <coughs> ground basin that goes down okay. the parking lot as well. All right, Jim, so uh, I mean, you'll know uh, when. When will you know? And then you'll inform the board. Will I'll let know? you know next week. Oh, you'll okay. know next week? Okay, I'll talk and we'll, 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 I'll, I'll get back to you during the week. Yeah, I think it's important that we understand what those issues are that delay this project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, gentlemen? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Chief, the police department update, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the report for January 2017, 136 parking tickets were issued, traffic citations 326. Uh, we currently have uh, applications uh, out for uh, meter uh, enforcement personnel that was closed on Friday. And we'll start be start doing some interviews in, in the next uh, week or ten days, and hopefully have two more people on board. Mm -hmm. Two hundred forty-one the traffic warnings were issued. We had a robbery at the Sunoco, Sunoco station on Township Line on January fourteenth. A, a black male suspect with a firearm took money, cigarettes. Ongoing investigation in Philadelphia and Upper Darby, and this has been a rash of convenience store burglaries up and down City Avenue and in the Overbrook section. So we're working with the, the neighboring departments. Sorry, John, uh, you said a burglary or a robbery? Robbery, 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 robbery. By, by gunpoint, yes. Which store? It's on a go station, right Township Line, Township by the Post Office. Oh, got it. Township okay. Meadowbrook. Yes, Township Meadowbrook. Uh, uh, on Rodmore Road, January 28th, we had a theft from Shed. The victim was confronted by the homeowner who implied he had a, had a knife. A weapon was not seen by the victim. A leaf blower was stolen. We had received from it information that gentleman runs a business uh, out of his uh, uh, house. Uh, we, we may have some suspects on that. Multiple burglaries. Kenmore Road, Sagamore Road, which I reported on last uh, uh, meeting, and we did make an arrest on that, and I identified the subject, uh, uh, suspect also, who is still in jail, by the way. Um, multiple thefts by vehicles, uh, Morgan Avenue, uh, one, two, three, five, three on Morgan, uh, four on Lexington, uh, 1,000 block of Steel Road. We made an arrest on that with Philadelphia. Uh, he's being charged. Uh, the above suspect is also being charged with uh, four vehicle thefts in December and the 100 block of Lexington. So we cleared up a lot, probably uh, close to a dozen uh, vehicles there. But once again, I'll say it again, that uh, vehicles unlocked. And that's our biggest problem in the township is people not locking their cars and leaving uh, valuable things, uh, items in their cars. Uh, sex offense, the Oxford Road uh, area, two incidents of females being grabbed on their buttocks by a suspect on a bicycle or a skateboard, one on January 25th, one on January, 20, uh, January 26th. A suspect of similar description. We had another one. It's not in this report, so uh, uh, it's a it's a younger male, uh, and we have a, a pretty good description. Hopefully, we can make an arrest of that pretty soon. Canine usages. We had um, um, nine canine usages. Uh, vehicle stop with arrest of marijuana was found. Seven vehicle stops with uh, uh, sniffs. Uh, alarm property checked. Uh, alarm with two uh, open doors. And just yesterday, uh, one of our officers uh, responded to an accident. Uh, the canine uh, did a sniff on the car. We found a large amount of uh, heroin <coughs> and other drugs, scales, and money in the car. So the guy was a dealer, worked at a local business. Wow. So he is currently under arrest. Lo worked at a local restaurant. So uh, he is under arrest. My report. You can take his car too, right? Uh, yes. That, that gets impounded, and then that is part of the drug mo the money that comes back. Well, that has to go through the process. Right. It's not just, we just take and keep it. Obviously, the court has to decide what happens to it. 
wasn't a nice car. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Just, just let them keep it. <laughs> Did any of the commissioners, um, I know the committee reports just, uh, assignments just came out, but nonetheless, there were committees that were still up and running. Does anybody have any uh, committee updates? I have one thing that we just keep in mind for the next couple months. I have a RHM meeting tomorrow night, and I think, I think Codes is going to be there as well. There's a push by Delcora to uh, uh, require wanting us to camera the lateral lines uh, on, a, on a real estate transfer, which you, you know what happened when we had curb work to be done, the, the real estate thing. So um, best estimate that I've seen, I think Ridley's already doing it. It's about 250 bucks to have your lateral camera at time of transfer. So um, Delcor is pushing that to the local sewer authorities and it could have a severe impact. Lateral is the homeowners. It's the homeowners from the connection the from the street. house to the street. Yeah. Right. Why, why, do they, why do they feel that's necessary? Uh, to, I mean, again, over the last several years, I and I work is the only way to save EDUs and to save more intrusion into the sewer system by, you know, into the stormwater management from the sewer system. So laterals are, are old and cracked and they need to be fixed. Uh, there's no good way to do it except if they get a blockage and, it, you know, the contractor goes in and rips up your lawn and, and does that. So what they're looking to do is they're recommending to municipalities that we require some type of cameraing. So it's it's coming. I'm just pointing that as an aware uh, that Delcor is actually looking to push that down to the municipalities. Our, on the RHM side, it would affect the seven municipalities that are part of that agreement. And then on the other half of the township, or a little bit more than half, it would affect our sewer department as well. So uh, just Mr. something to keep Pan in mind. Yeah, Mr. Pannoni might know the answer to this question, but what? Um, where is it that the sewer usage is metered? Where the lateral hits the street? No, no. Oh, no. Sewer usage is metered as it leaves the township. It's metered, and actually, it's only metered as it leaves the township in half the township. That which goes to Darby Creek, the other half which goes to Upper Darby, doesn't get metered until it gets in the city Don't of Philadelphia. Don't we have individual sewer, sewer charges for our? Yeah, those are done by the water. It's water. That's yeah, based on water, water usage. Oh, it's aqua. based on the water. So your water Our coming gallon. in your house is metered. The presumption is it's the same. I, right, and, and as long as it's all proportional, I get it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the macro metering is <coughs> the township for our intermunicipal agreements. Okay. Just I just pointed out, just it's coming. The argument's going to be coming, so think about it, and, and we'll get more specifics as, as Delcor and the other municipalities. And the state uh, runs about $250. Who's got the authority to, I mean, does, it looks the, like it's does what the Henderson county charges. or the state have the authority to order our residents to do that, or is it strictly on us? It, we would have to do, I think lo locally, I'm not 100% sure, Jim probably knows more than I do, we, we would probably have to vote to approve that and require it as part of our codes department when they do a home inspection. So, That's right. So it would be on us to be the bad guys if we ultimately elect to enforce it. Okay. Do we have any intel on how much of I and I is a consequence? I mean, as it is right now, we when we do the inspection of a house, where is Lori? They don't want to fix our potholes either. When we do when when we inspect a house, we look for the illegal hookups, right? You're ready to go. Floor drains, sump pumps, directly into sanitary lines. And now back for valves and other stuff. Right. <clears throat> so this this would go beyond. It would be a point of sale ordinance uh, requiring the inspection, the video inspection of the lateral. <clears throat> I think that what Commissioner Wexler is indicating is that it looks as though conditions on because a lot of these contracts are coming up for renewal. RHM's contract with um, I guess um, Delcora, Delcora and. City. Our contract or our charter for the RHM, because we have to get state approval also for the RHM, and we're a member of RHM, um, may be conditioned on the municipalities having these sorts of uh, I and I controls in place. Are they doing this further downstream too? I believe uh, Ridley's they, already started it. I'm not it was still you know, yeah. if, if you don't mind, let me jump in. We, we actually we actually went through this a. a, a a couple of years ago, the genesis is that the state of Pennsylvania is saying to various watersheds that have inflow and infiltration problems and subsequent overflows that you got to start addressing it, right? And you can address it by, like Lori said, taking out sump pumps, repairing your sanitary sewers, repairing your mantles, all stuff we do. 
Senate Pennsylvania is now saying that's not enough. We're recommending, and in some places we may get to the point where we require it, hasn't gotten to that point yet, that you do point of sale inspections of laterals, and if those laterals are cracked and damaged, they get repaired at the point of sale time. It hasn't come to the point where it's required yet, but we're starting to see it more and more being um, uh, a condition of 537 planning approval. So you've got Ridley, you've got Concord, you've got maybe three or four municipalities in Delaware County so far that have approved it. There's a few others like us that it's in front of, us, Marple, Springfield, uh, Upper Darby, it's in front of them. But, but to date, the DEP hasn't said to us, we must do this. Dave, how, how does that, how would that work? Like, how does that, the places that are doing it already, how does that work? Like, the camera goes through. Is it then up to us to decide whether it needs to be fixed or not? I mean, who, who makes that call? Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's usually not that difficult to call. I mean, right. you, you put the camera through, you'll see the cracks. Um, I believe the answer to the question is it's a municipality that makes the final call. But typically, what those townships are doing is saying, hey, here's three or four pre-approved companies that'll they can videotape your lateral because we don't want any, just anybody doing it because if something goes on with that lateral it could affect our sewer and here's some pre pre-negotiated prices then at the point of sale somebody in the codes office looks at the camera it looks at the videotape and says that lateral is okay we don't have to worry about it just like they'll get a curb or that right. lateral is damaged it's got to be repaired or replaced there's different ways to replace laterals now there are other ways what's the cost uh, Most uh, let me tell you, lateral replacement in in your house is is in, well into the thousands. Yes, so seven five to ten. Grand, right? They, they use the seven existing pipe, right? They they send something, they blow th through the pipe existing. Sometimes, pipe. Sometimes, sometimes you can do that. Time. Sometimes yeah. traditionally, you always had to dig them up. Yeah. More and more, we're seeing that the existing pipe, you can push something through and push yeah, it out. Yeah. Burst it, pipe bursting, but that doesn't work for everybody's lateral. That's 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 maybe less than half the time that that that'll work. It's getting better, by the way, so it's becoming more and more common, but it won't work every time. So the cost is, would you say, seven to ten thousand? Oh yeah, easily. Could you you do something like my my yard? Could be even. It could be more. And by the way, a lot of times, here's a kicker on them. A lot of times, they're bare laterals because there's a big tree over them. Sometimes mm -hmm. just taking a tree down could cost three, four thousand dollars. I just got a quote from Henderson for ten. Yeah. Yep. And they were going to blow the lateral. Yeah, to replace. Yeah. yeah. Yep, with, with any tree, any tree removal? Uh, no, no, uh, no, no tree removal. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Put a three, four thousand dollar tree on top of that thing, yeah. and your ten, fifteen thousand dollars. And then the homeowner pays two hundred and fifty for the camera, roughly. Yep. Even yeah. if there's nothing wrong with it. Yep. Exactly. Plus the curb and that's curbs that have to be done. Right? Plus the sidewalks or yeah. anything that has to be done for the sidewalk. Yeah. And anything else that is found in their house that has to bring, come up the code. A little, I guess as an engineer, it's a little Ooh. interesting. You got a town like they Concord. Be, they won't be moving back in. <laughs> you got a town like Concord, it's almost academic because a lot of new homes are there, they're not finding problems. Yeah, I was going to say, 90% of their stuff it. is 10 years old or less. You go into the newer, the older neighborhoods, you go into like the Ardmores where, where we got a lot of older houses. Um, you go into oh, the ardmore has got some old sections up at Darby. So you'll, you'll find more and more you have problems with the laterals. I would say probably anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of the complaints that we, our, sanit our sanitary uh, division gets for uh, backups that we, when we arrive, that it's actually not in our main. It's actually from root lateral. infiltration or complications due to the person's lateral. So I think eventually, uh, if this does go through, it's going to protect a potential buyer. And I, and I know I have the insurance that you're talking about um, through my additional as an addendum to my homeowners that in the event that I have a problem with my lateral, uh, I think I pay $55 a year, but it's well worth it. Did but, you have to inspect the lateral to get that insurance? Uh, I didn't, no. That's a DEP stall process. <laughs> is a point of sale is a logical time to do it. It protects the buyer, but ultimately it, it, it's your town. Ultimately it's going to be up to you guys to decide whether or not you want to do that. If you say to the DP, no, we're not going to address infiltration and inflow by taking care of the, by, by a point of sale, it will put a little burden on us to go out and find another place to do that. How does that affect our MS4 issues? Uh, different issue. They're unrelated. It is good. Okay. I mean, they're a little bit related, but not yeah. enough to... Just that infiltration is why I wondered. Yeah. Yeah, are we still getting... Are we collecting data on INI &I that tells us... I mean, I, we've been undertaking, at least township-wide, a lot of efforts to fix INI, &I, plus we've we have fixed a lot of illegal hookups, which, you know, make their 
presence known during big rain events? Every time we find something, we document it, whether it's removing a sanitary sewer, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, whether it's moving a sump pump from the sewer system or when a docks guy's finding a man, all that they, they fix on the spot, all the way to the big sanitary sewer jobs like we did over by uh, the Coles. We'll document what we did and what we think the impact of, of that job is on the inflow and infiltration. And is somebody keeping track of the, do we have a, do we have a way to track during large weather events the amount of I and I? Well, that's easier said than done. Larry. First off, remember the only places we're metered are into the RHM system, and we're not metered in the Upper Darby system. Oh, we're not. All right, so that doesn't get metered until all the way down in the city of Philadelphia. And there are so many variables, and this is part of why DSP struggles with trying to improve and track I and I. There are so many variables into what happens in a rain to a sanitary sewer with the rain event. If the groundwater table's down here this year and it rains versus a groundwater table up here the following year and the following year. So there's a lot of variables, the intensity of the storm, the duration of the storm. Um, I spent my whole life trying to track that stuff. You can sort of see general trends, but it's it's not as measurable as as the engineers would like to think it is. Dave, when was the last overflow down Mary Place? I don't know. It was a while ago, right? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Honestly, see, that's, Steve, that's, I just don't that's, know. That's the camera. You, you know, Laura? Yeah, okay, Hecka doesn't have that's a red button. So that one's I had that one facing the TV. So how much of it's really coming from the residents' homes as well? How much of the I and I inflow and infiltration? Right. It's not a part of it. I mean, it but, comes but, from it comes from a little bit everywhere. Some pumps and homes. Bad I'm about from our, man, our, we've man, done a lot to I, curb it. Man, I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what the percentage well, of I, it is. Look, unless we have a reason to be in somebody's house, we have no idea about sump pumps. So we do inspect at the time that we train, that we Transfer. turn houses over. Um, but, I mean, what's our turnover in our township for all of our houses? I assume it's pretty but, lengthy. But years ago, the problem was... What the DEP said, you had to fix the main all the way from Radnor down to the city of Philadelphia to okay. fix that. For capacity yeah. issue. Right. Yep. So there's not even a capacity. There's a capacity problem. Right? There's not enough capacity. There is reported capacity issues in the RHM line. we got to be a little bit careful about. Uh, okay, I'm not an engineer, so you, you tell I mean, The reason me. I say we got to be a little bit careful is, don't forget, we're, trying, we're pursuing getting capacity in the system. Um, but there's, I'm, 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 answer your question again. Answer your question again. There's, All right. So when was the last overflow and <coughs> how much of it is coming from residential laterals from our township at least? Last we overflow, I don't, I, again, I, don't, I haven't heard of a reported overflow in a while. I think Lori said it's been at least a year. Yeah. Um, to quantify what's coming from laterals, it, it, it's hard to quantify, Steve. There's, let me put it this way. It's not 99% of the flow. I'll tell you that much. I mean, if that's what your right. concern is, it's certainly not, it's not the heaviest lift. It's what but the it's DEP, not 1% either. Yeah, it's not 1%. It's, it's what the DEP is saying is that's doable, that's attainable. That's why they're focusing on laterals. It's, it's feasible to go in and address that. Thank you, Mr. Bononi. You that answer. Well, <laughs> you know, I just think about it. Thank you, Mr. Wexler, for uh, yeah. advising us. And but anybody buying a house could insist on doing if it. We this could. could be part of any inspection anyway, right? Uh, part of the inspection, that, yes. More and more people are buying houses, they're getting those done as part of the home inspection. Right? That's what he was just saying. Yeah. Right. yeah. They're, they're doing it on their own. The buyer's doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But yeah, no, no. I, I think that's, that's what you were trying to say, Larry, right? Yeah, right. is that my, I mean, I assume that this is, I mean, in some ways the market's just going to create this. But where demand. Mr. Wexler is saying is that Del Corey is pushing this yeah, and um, mandating it eventually. I, it as Dave pointed it. out, this, you know, it comes from the state and it goes down. Now it's a recommendation. And as it's going oh, down, it's, look, it's coming up. I, I was here. I was not a commissioner. I was here the night that you did the first curb ordinance. And we've been regretting that for like 15 years now. I, I, if the state, if by state law they mandate we do this, you know, then then we don't do it. I think the market is ultimately going to create a demand that this is just going to be one of the things that's part of any I transfer right. real estate. And frankly, that's what people I ought agree. to do. But boy, uh, until somebody with the authority to demand that our people do this, it's a hard I mean, time I, at this level telling everybody they have to. 
Yeah, I, I agree I, with you. I'd be much All more right. comfortable with if I'm paying for a home inspection. Then it becomes, then it goes to the lawyers. I'm not going to buy your house because I, right? Know, I'm not going to buy your house because you got this reduction. problem. And yeah, then they so. say, well, it's going to be a $10,000 problem, and I don't want to cut down this tree. And then you can negotiate whether you want to do this worm that blasts totally or agree. cut down the tree. I totally but agree. I mean, let it be between the parties. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I'd... Thank you, Commissioner. Any further updates? Mr. Holmes is for less government intervention. That's good. Mr. Good Holmes thing. is for uniformity, okay? <laughs> I, I, it's very important. We and should act. We should act when our brothers and sisters at the state level and the county level aren't acting and there's a problem <laughs> worth fixing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to make it yeah. more difficult to live here and easier to I live agree. a block I away. I agree with that. Right. All right. I agree with that. Totally agree. I agree. All right, gentlemen. Obviously, the exceptions <laughs> to that statement. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda anyway. is a discussion for invisible fence. What I'd like to do, if we could, um, if you would allow me, I'd like to actually change that around to do the skating electrical update by Mr. Gentili because first on the ordinance is animal control invisible fence so we can discuss that at the same time so if you okay. wouldn't mind if mr gentilly if you could give us a skating electrical update oh certainly as you would recall when uh, i submitted the uh, 2017 budget we had some capital funds budgeted to make improvements and one of them was the improvements to the skadium there was a number of improvements that need to be made one uh, most importantly was the uh, upgrade of the electrical system. We have three panels that are uh, uh, pretty much outdated. Mr. Pannoni and his staff uh, have been doing inspections of that equipment and we are, are preparing to place it out on bid. Uh, working with the Scadium, uh, the Scadium will be shutting down uh, the month of May, so we're proposing to do that work. Uh, presently, right now, we're looking to replace two of the panels that will the proposed cost will be anywhere from just for the panels uh, fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars, and it will take us about five to eight weeks to get it. So to ensure that we have that equipment here uh, ready to do the uh, for the bids to go for installation of that equipment, where uh, Mr. Pannoni and his staff are getting uh, soliciting some uh, quotes for us, uh, and if you recall, if they are, if that figure is fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. I won't need board approval. It's, it's a necessary uh, equipment that needs to be replaced. I'm gonna head and order that equipment immediately and we will have it ready to uh, make those uh, uh, upgrades um, during the month of May. And uh, hopefully I, Dave, did I miss anything? No, that was pretty clear. Do I have any questions? Well, that's, um, that's good because uh, when I was a couple of months ago when I was in the committee uh, in their meeting, they were very concerned about that, as you know, Larry, and rightfully so, because their concern was that if the panels or the electrical system failed during their season, they would have to, they would close. And so it's, thank you for expediting that. Sure. And while we're on the skadium, uh, it, it's really hopping. It's got, it has extraordinary turnout for the last month i've been there uh, on all the sundays um their hockey clinic and their group lessons on sunday afternoon are all full they're starting up another session next week <coughs> stack of applications this high it's really um uh it seems to be a, a great renewed interest um uh, in the Scadium, and I'm looking at their, I happen to have their schedule up right in front of me just for the week, Sunday to Saturday, and uh, it's amazing how much, uh, how much ice time that they have filled um, and, uh, and how popular the public sessions have been. So um, new management's doing a nice job there. There's a new uh, snack bar in there that's doing a, a great job as well. And, um, uh, and there's been, you know, terrific, there's been terrific physical improvements in there, not only the new boards and the new ice that we did a couple of years ago, but we finally dialed up the offices and uh, done some other work, and it's really paying off. Larry, is there any plan to, I was actually there for the open skate on a Sunday um, and sk skated with my daughter, yeah. and the, the skates were painful, painfully uncomfortable. 
So, uh, and well, were you wearing a, the right I know, size? I know there was. Yeah, I was. <laughs> there Is were it the age of the hockey skates? Did you skates, have so. them on the right feet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they had those soft tech or whatever they are. Yeah. And we, the plan is to buy those over a period of time. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, the de- that the, they are, I mean, they, they are in the constant state of renewing and, you know, updating those skates. The hockey skates that they rent are good. Uh, the, the <laughs> That's all you're worried about, right? Figure <laughs> skates, you know, have gotten old, but figure <laughs> skates, you know, do last a while yeah, um, they are they were i could barely walk yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but you're not supposed to program, walk you're supposed to skate they, yeah they, they, they re- is i mean it them. is something they are they are constantly renewing i mean i will tell you this okay the rink at city hall now that they that's right out there in dilworth plaza which is much newer than the stadium um those skates are awful. And the first season, they've never admitted, but I'm going to say it even though we're on TV. Um, the first year, they got all the skates, and they didn't have a sharpener down there. So they were sending everybody out on flat, unsharpened hockey skates. I'm, oh, I'm not making this up. And they're wondering why everybody is just falling everywhere and they can't get anywhere and complaining about the skates. But they didn't even have a sharpener on site. So, well, it's the um, Rothman rink. So yeah. if you fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. It was kind of a feeder. It was like feeder. one of those. Uh, yeah, it was like a lost leader for Rothman, I think. Is how that worked out, but uh, they're really um, uh, they, they are they are doing a great job. They're acting in capacity, was, and I think they're going to use that great. extra cash to buy new skates. Oh, so their, skates their ice is the best. Now we have so many ice skates in our garage. Just say the word. I mean, if if your daughter wants, uh, if Maya wants skates, uh, just let me know her size. I'm sure we've got a set. No, they had they had a, they they have a mix of the old figure skates, and then they had that new soft tech, which is more like a sneaker. Yeah. Type of, which is much more comfortable. So, no, but all joking aside, I mean, I no. must have 22 pairs of skates in my garage. So, yeah. <laughs> all hockey skates, though. No, no, no. I, figure <laughs> skates. Annie, Annie's a figure skater. This month is Heart Healthy Month. That's the stadium's theme. So, everybody be heart healthy and go to the stadium and skate. And the okay. stadium advisory board members will be here in the March work session to do your, their yearly um, presentation. Report right. to the board. Uh, I will not be here. March work session. Lori will be. Lori, if you don't know, you'll be sitting in one. Okay. Any further questions, concerns, discussions on that? Thank you very much, gentlemen. And next on the agenda, uh, there's a couple uh, ordinances here, and the first one is animal control. Invisible fence. There's a first reading on it. And uh, I hope everyone had an opportunity to peruse the ordinance on it. And we have a discussion. Would anybody like to open up the discussion on invisible fence? Uh, Actually, uh, we, um, I'd had a question, uh, two questions. I was, um, um, the issue of, that the fence itself needs to be buried or configured in such a way that the uh, that the dog receives its uh, shock. either its shock or its threat of shock. Eventually, of course, you know, you, your goal is to turn off the electricity entirely. Bob the dog theory. just remembers where it thinks it would get shocked and it stops running across there. Um, but that it's more than five feet from every outer boundary. Um, Considering I myself live on a tenth of an acre, if you if I lose five feet in all directions, that dog can basically run around on a pie tin and uh, it would find itself, yeah, very, very unhappy. Um, and I, I wonder whether that can be, you know, whether that could be limited to front yards um, as opposed to, um, you know, every bit of the, uh, uh, of the property or, or limited to sidewalks. Um, I think but I do understand that this is, these are general, um, that these are requirements that a number of other townships have, have also imposed on invisible fence. No, I, I agree with you, Larry. I think front yard would make more sense. Keeping with the five foot? Right. I mean, that's where most of our foot traffic is. One of our concerns here, I, as I understand, and is side the person walking. Yeah, the person walking down the sidewalk who has Cujo run at him and they don't have any indication that this is an invisible fence and if the invisible fence stops just, you know, uh, one, you know, uh, a foot away or, or right on the edge of the sidewalk that it scares the living daylights out of folks or could possibly even affect, um, you know, get to them or something. Uh, and 
uh, so the, the ordinance as written right now has a five foot perimeter inside, I think the entire property. And I, I would, um, I wonder why, whether we want to make that border any smaller or whether we want to confine those borders to, um, sidewalks or front areas, uh, you know, as opposed to the entire property. Yeah. I, I think the last meeting I was saying that it should be the front yard. Mrs. Kirk, do you uh, want to come up the... with any of this, or I know you do the or part of the ordinance um, involvement. Not involved. Okay, Mrs. What up? Hello. Hello again. Uh, the um, provisions of the ordinance were um, submitted by Commissioner Siegel, mm -hmm. put into an ordinance form, and handed up to the board for discussion. So. Yeah. Um, if your inclination oh. as a board is to provide a setback in the front yard, and what end it, should it read also? I would front yard B, A and B, because there are front yard. There's side yards on corner properties. Um, they're, they're secondary front yards. Yes. We still call them a front yard. So. Uh, mm. But if they're fenced, you know. Does it matter if they're fenced? Like my house, I live on a corner and have a fence no. there. Does, is, it doesn't matter if there's a fence. Is, no, if it's a fence. It doesn't matter. Right? Fences? Yeah. That's only invisible fences. Yeah. So I would, I would say front yard and, and side. You okay with that, Larry? Yeah, I mean, you mean side yard where it's the, the sidewalk or the street yeah, as opposed to... Yeah, it's anywhere to the right. from the sidewalk, right. the, the right. public right away. Yeah. Right, I'm, 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 kids, I'm thinking of my block where we've got twins, so, and you've got small little properties, so some people have, you know, they've got small backyards, and so the backyard might only be 15 feet wide. Are we going to make them in the backyard? Are we going to make them go five feet in, you know, to the side yard if they don't have a fence between the properties? I don't, I don't know about the backyard if you need five feet. I think the front you would, because of your concerns. I mean, for the front, yeah. For the backyard, I assume that the neighbor who'd be the person most likely in the backyard exactly. would already know right. the first time right. the dog yelps. Or I know you have Cujo back there. By. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah, so I have no problem with front yards, and, and to the extent that it's a secondary front yard, you know, on exactly. a corner property, yeah. that's, that's fine. Well, just um, to, re to remind the board, the five-foot setback is from uh, right of ways. Right away lines um, and and um, sidewalks and right now it's property lines to a contiguous neighbor. So what you're asking is then to put five feet from any sidewalk or right of way line in a front yard and then strike the rest. That's the sense I'm getting. Right. I wouldn't do five feet from a property line unless yeah, except for the front. Well, I mean in the back though you. What about the backyard? You got to let. You still have to confine the dog. The right. question is, you know, we bar you bury a, an electric. You know, you you, right. you bury these transmitters, and they set up a, a, a an invisible fence. Hence the name. So, if you have a backyard and then your neighbor's backyard, you know, up it's yours. You. Right. Um, are we going to require that your dog hits the invisible fence five five feet before it hits the property line, or can you put it right at the property line? I think you put it right at the property line. Yeah. And I do too, since I don't think you're going to surprise that neighbor right, on the know, side in your back. I agree. Much more worried about foot traffic. Much more worried about foot traffic going by front yard and side yard. Mr. Siegel? Wouldn't it be solved by just saying any public sidewalk or right of way, because those are the areas where public goes, and then you've yeah. resolved it? It's fine. Okay. Keep it simple. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Yes, we're going back now, to what you're saying. Now, then there's the, the sign, the presence of an electric offense. Um, what? Um, I do have that. I agree with you. It says prominently displayed. And I don't think Is there a minimum specific. on what the sign should be? Or can you just yeah, I, put a sign? <laughs> I mean, my, my thoughts on this, and I think I expressed this a couple of times, is the, the point of a resident wanting an electric fence is because, one, maybe they don't want to put up a fence, um, but also aesthetics, they, they wouldn't want to put a sign. Um, and I also don't know if the, if the purpose is to, to avoid sort of scaring somebody down the street. 
you know, unless we're talking about very large signs, which we probably don't want anyway, um, I don't know if there's going to be much to, you know, people, pe if people are startled by a dog coming running at them, they're not looking towards the ground for a sign anyway. So, I mean, I think the, the five foot is sort of a, it's a distance that will hopefully alleviate any of those concerns, but I think the sign sort of defeats the purpose that many of the residents would want the fence for. But the, but the sign isn't very, very large. It's more like a stake in the ground with a. But that's just yeah. it. It just says we're, that a sign and, right, must be we're just displayed. Sign. It we're doesn't not. say. I mean, it could be a piece of cardboard. Sign, big sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we get an invisible sign? Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, but I, my concern, though, absolutely, is the next ordinance that's on the schedule talks about the guys that throw the newspapers and all that stuff on our lawns, and you have to have a sign out there to say, don't throw it or don't, I'm doing it. Now, so if I have an invisible fence and I don't want that trash thrown in my yard that those guys throw every day, I got to have two signs on my front yard? I don't think that's what our people want either. No, definitely not. So, I mean. You want to strike number four altogether. I would, I would be, I agree with the commissioner, Lusky, on that as well. I would, that's I would strike, strike that. Is the, now, uh, Commissioner Before. Siegel, do you think the five foot, uh, do you think the five foot setback from a public right of way or a sidewalk um, gives enough, um, I guess, stops the dog soon enough to address one of the concerns you had, which is, of course, the surprise to somebody having a dog run at them and while they prepare for attack, the dog, dog then stops right. just short. Well, I could tell you that what I drafted w or was based upon, because the board had asked me also to look at what other municipalities, and none of the neighboring right here, but a lot of municipalities and cities have these ordinances, and almost all of them lim have a five-yard set, a five-foot setback uh, from a sidewalk um, to, to address that issue. You know, some don't allow them in front yards at all. Um, some, you know, limit, you know, limit that. But, you know, I don't think that's reasonable either here. Uh, but the five-foot setback is very common. You know, the, the provisions that I had suggested to the township are based on what I saw in many other places without, obviously, lim barring them in front yards, which I don't think is, is, is the way to go either. But that gives, I think, enough room, five foot, you know? Yeah, I, I think the five foot addresses That's... the same issue, and we could drop the signs. We can always add to it. So two, two questions for you, Lori. So uh, I assume, obviously, anybody with an existing invisible fence would be grandfathered, yeah. wouldn't be subject to the order. Okay. And then second question is, how do we, uh, how do we actually enforce this? Are we going to notify the invisible fence companies? There are only a handful of them, or... To provide some education, we'll do it on the website. We'll do it um, in the newsletter, and then any of the local companies that install them. But there, do I they mean, need you a can permit? Buy some of these supplies. Uh, deed, deed, yeah, do it yourself. Yeah. It's low voltage, yeah. So I could do it. <laughs> yeah. So we should put it put it put it in the newsletter or something, or at least yeah. let people know. Or put it on the website. Put it in the newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. But we're talking about uh, <coughs> control, and so if somebody's. Installing a fence, an invisible fence, and it's at the sidewalk. They're not deemed to be in control of the animal if it's able to come up to the sidewalk. And I think the initial concern that was expressed to Commissioner Siegel was the person felt that the dog was charging them they, when they walked with the stroller, charging at them. And she, she wasn't sure if it was controlled by an invisible fence because it would come right up to the sidewalk. So the idea is to provide some protection for the pedestrians. You know, conversely, if I'm the dog owner, I don't get warm and fuzzy from an invisible fence because that might control my dog, but it doesn't keep your dog from coming in my yard and, and you know, messing it up with the dog. <laughs> All right, so. I think we got Make some sure that we have it. It's. Yeah. We're going to alleviate. But, uh, but Commissioner Lewis, you already asked. This is, this is already an existing ordinance. What is? No, it's well, not. We, no. 4913 is the existing <coughs> ordinance. And, and there's, <coughs> there's an existing ordinance, but control and confinement yeah. is where 
the amendment comes in. Right, is where the amendments come in. So, so you asked about enforcement. I assume we already have enforcement provisions for this ordinance. Well, no, no, Larry, I think he's talking about enforcement of the five foot. So, I mean, none of that, that's all new for an electronic fence. The, the, the existing amendment is just to deal with controlling your, your animal. Mm -hmm. Anything about the electric fence is all new. Yeah, and there'd be... Right. I, I'm, There'd be no way. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. In terms of g getting everybody who builds a new one, we're right, gonna exactly. yeah, right. they, we're gonna try to alert people. But there's already, if you don't follow this ordinance, and then there's whatever penalty provisions already exist under this, uh, under this provision is how we'll enforce this thing, right? Right. Whether it's tickets or summary offenses or whatever it is. Yeah, there are. I'm, I'm sure there's. It's the, we have the enforcement provisions for the leash law. So it would be the same thing. I mean, we're not obviously going to start zoning issues for this. It's not a zoning or that type of thing. But we have a leash law enforcement, which I assume the animal control officer or anyone can enforce. All police. these are um, under our animal right. regulations. Okay. So number four is coming out. That's Anybody, everybody is in agreement to that? I mean, the enforcement issue is key because what if we go like I have underground nope. wires for streetlights that are in our street and some guy puts an electric fence in and cuts the line between the streetlight and goes out in front of Mr. Pannoni's house he's going to be upset because you know so there's got to be some <clears throat> control over it if you're going to if we're going to get in you, you're in for a penny you're in for a pound all of a sudden because you've got other issues now that you're you're putting these things on our books and you know, now you got eight one one issues and digging, and all of a sudden, when you're new, you're right away. Yeah, because we, we already have invisible have fences everywhere. We've already people had already that issue. So people have already dug up their lawns and maybe cut off their neighbor's electric supply yeah. or whatever they've done. Mm -hmm. um, Barely dig. I'm hoping that anybody who's doing it themselves knows five, what they're doing, inches. and anybody who who is using a professional, that these professionals make a call and make sure they're not cutting some. My, my concern wire. is once you regulate it, do we do we bear any responsibilities? Because we've now made it a regulatory thing in the township, so that's all. When they bury, when no they bury liability these. under the political subdivision tort claims act, there would be none. They bury these. Yeah, these are only like a little bit. They are they're like oh. literally three inches. <laughs> no, but Bill, you bring up a good point. Really, I mean, it's Pico tells you all the time before you dig, Dave. Isn't this right? You need to call. Huh? Yeah, but this they're buried like three inches, literally three inches below the surface. Cause I'm always cutting mine, so. Literally, in some cases less than that. Some cases, you know, they, they just barely bury, bury this. So, otherwise, the dog can't get, you know, it's got to, you can't know. Get shot. Right, it's yeah. real, right. There isn't yeah. a great deal of power to yeah. these things. So, yeah. they can't bury them too deep, but they lose looking, their efficacy. Yeah. I'm looking at one of the companies. They say between three inches and 24 inches. Yeah, mine's like. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, then that's 24 inches. I would call. Okay. No, but I'm sorry. Is your concern? Well, again, we're not we're not regulating the, not to do this at all, not to regulate it at all. It's, I mean, it's, it's gone on for a hundred years. You know, these things have been around forever. I don't, we. You know. Well, one of the big things here also is is, is this. You talked about the sign. <clears throat> okay. The whole reason I think it, it came up is because, you know, somebody's walking down the street and they don't know there's an invisible fence there, so there should be a sign. So are we at the point here, or are we deleting number G4, or are we leaving that in there? I would recommend we get rid of the sign. I, I would as well. Uh, I'll agree. Um, I do think that this is a, that these amendments are amendments worth passing. We have a we have tiny little, you know, we have very compact neighborhoods, people. We have a walking town. People walk in my neighborhood. People walk in all sorts of neighborhoods. They walk little dogs. They walk baby buggies. They walk wherever they walk. Awesome. They jog around. Big time. Um, and, uh, you know, to the extent that a constituent has raised having the living big daylight scared big, out of them big, by a dog big. that came at them and stopped just short of them, um, it doesn't hurt for us to recognize that, recognize that's a problem in our town. So, I mean, 
can always repeal it if it becomes oppressive or uh, if the state preempts us and does something else at the, the state level with invisible fences. Uh, Mrs. Widow, as far as housekeeping goes, uh, I noticed that in the old control and confinement section, A through D, the, it referred to the subject. We have three different uh, characteristics here. We have canine, dog, domestic animal through this, through this ordinance here. Is, can, can we knock it down to one description there? Can it give you canine all the way through? And if it is canine, do we have to have male and female in there? I mean, is there a reason? Is there a difference between? I, I don't imagine why there's any reason to have to have. Well, I'm just thinking since we're in here now, it is. So should it just read all the way through? Um, like, for instance, you have dog. And uh, in G, Not the suggestion, and then they marked it in. And yeah. G two and G three and all, just change that to K nine, so that, in other words, the ordinance reads it's consistent, consistent all the way through. Yes. Now I see you have also domestic animal, and that does have its own definition. Yes. So, if you want to leave that in there, that's fine. Got a neighbor with a pet pig, it runs out on the front lawn. <laughs> Well, but uh, we also have a zillion neighbors that have cats, and we're not suggesting cats need to be confined, are we? No. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not, but... <laughs> Feral cats? Uh, well, there's an issue with them. Um, no, it, the way this is reading, it, it does say in Section E, domestic animals, and in F, if the domestic animal. The rest of 4913 deals with canine and dogs. So you just want to put through canine through the entire, anytime it refers to the subject animal. That makes sense. Okay. Any further discussion on, uh, on this topic? There being none, gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, ordinance uh, number two, or the second one on the agenda, P2 2017, is a litter control. That's a first reading. Are there any questions? <coughs> where is this? Um, where, we are, are we changing the law so now that it's enough to put up a sign and anybody who gives you anything after you've put up a sign is now breaking the law? It's It's... Uh, this is also the genesis is is me um i get a lot of complaints in the summer particularly when people go away that the um circulars end up on their driveways and they go away for a couple of weeks and they pile up and it's a sign that no one is home um i contacted Ms. hanlon Whitup, and we did have it we do have an ordinance now on the books that says if you don't want it you have to provide certified mail notice to the person who is s providing uh, the circulars, whatever it is, for a grocery store, whatever, uh, which obviously makes no sense. Um, I had a couple of constituents over the last couple months inquire about this, and since what we have on the books makes no sense, I looked, this is similar to what Philadelphia has, what uh, New York City has, and what a lot of other communities around here have in some form that if you don't want them, you can put up a little, you know, no you know, a little sign, um, because I think what we have now is of no value. So if we're going to have it, let's have something that can actually be enforceable. So, so you're, you're deleting a similar issues. Some folks have raised in my town, and we've had a hard time finding out who is actually right. behind the distribution. Yeah. And I guess if uh, and our you know, by the time anybody complains about stuff piling up, it's impossible to find. So I guess if our if our police see somebody distributing and they just go back up the street and see any in properties where the no soliciting sign is distributed, they can chase these folks down and ticket them. And so are they, are they, are these words all mean the same thing: no soliciting, no trespass. If I put up a no trespassing sign and I'm driving by and I throw a flyer into <coughs> driveway, is that considered trespassing? I mean, what is what's no advertisement? I mean, what 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 words would we what what would the sign say 
I put one in my fr front yard uh, uh, concisely. Not I would want to put up a sign that says no soliciting, no trespassing, no advertisements. So <laughs> well, I think it appears where it says when regards to how to handbills, periodicals, and newspapers placed at or near the front door entrance. You have your option to put down that yep. no soliciting, so they can't knock on your door. That means, yeah, that. But the, no trespassing, they can't come on your property. No advertisements means they can't throw that by your front door. Because on C, it so says you, near you the driveway or something. If you wanted all three, then you'd have to have a sign that had all three of them on there. You don't want somebody knocking on your door or, or stepping on your property. Well, we, or throw an ad. I think at that point, just a skull and a crossbones yeah. and, yeah. and, and well, we, keep out, I think, might be, yeah, might be the message at that point. Well, we're, like, I dare you to come here. Yeah, it better be good. We yeah. have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Invisible fence. No, no, but <laughs> Commissioner Siegel. Yeah, we do have already the no soliciting ordinance, right. which says you put no soliciting on your, your door. Mm -hmm. Um, right, and the, no one's the, supposed to knock on it. Yeah. None of these folks who are, you know, right. who are supposed to register. And the police do enforce that, you know. Um, it's five. Um, the converse, though, is this, where, you, you know, you also, sometimes you get things in your mailbox that people put in. <laughs> this would theoretically <laughs> stop it if you had the sign at your door, <laughs> you know, versus the people who throw it who are just driving down the street. They're not, you know. The mailbox is supposed to be enforced actually by the post office because post post it's technically not your own. But yeah. but meaning that they should, you know, you yeah, raise go. a complaint to your to the post office that people are putting things in your post in your in your mm. mailbox, and they're supposed to police it. Well, in, in theory, the postal. I, inspectors. I don't have any issue with the intent and what we're trying to do here. I just I just think it's going to be. I mean, I, well, I, I put I, three. Yeah. Three lines on a sign. Well, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> now it's, it's called crossbones. No, it's it's or. It's a, B, or C, or or similar notice. That's but the, the fact idea. is, if you don't want somebody putting something on your driveway, chances are you don't want them soliciting and you don't want them trespassing either. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I have a just one. just to raise a Pick them all. couple concerns. One, one. I mean, again, we're talking about a sign, um, and we're we're leaving that wide open, I guess. Uh, as to what kind of sign we're talking about that we're putting on our front lawn, um, but but I also just you know I mean none of us on on this board may particularly care for these flyers or or, or solicitations, but obviously there's certain businesses that feel it useful, um, and the majority of them are local businesses, and I I think you know just to react to to eliminate them out of hand, we, we need to consider sort of the message we're then sending to our local business community. But this doesn't eliminate them. Somebody has to make the affirmative step of putting a sign in the lawn that says no no hand bills, let's say. It's, no, it, it's already the there. Yeah. It's already we there. We talked about no signs for the for the invisible fence, and now, you know. We're gonna I get see. constituents that call up and say, you know what, someone came to my door, and it, it, they didn't want them soliciting. Some people are afraid to answer the door, whatever the case may be, and I tell them, that if they put a three by five card taped on their front window by the front door, it says no soliciting, then the police have the right, they can call the police and the police have the right to check the neighborhood and stop the person from soliciting. I thought they had they a- They have to have a permit yeah. to do it in well, the first We're talking about throwing the advertising though. I mean, where are you gonna put that sign? Your driveway. Well, it, it's normally. You know what the fence sign? You put a I well, I think it gives the it gives the homeowner I mean, the choice. Do you think yeah, they're really going to look at it it these guys driving by? No, no. Really? But but Steve, the 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 point is to give a homeowner a chance to do something about this. They put a right sign, and therefore, what does it mean? So somebody puts a sign at the end. Somebody for the last two summers has come back from their vacation <coughs> and found five or six flyers laying in their driveway. They're soaking wet from the rain, or they've been driven over by the neighbor three times, and they're just sitting there in a plastic bag, right. and they've been sitting there for the whole that. two weeks. These people are gone away, and they're angry about it. They call. I, I get these calls, and folks are like, what can you do about these solicitors? We can't do much because it's not like we're flying the drone everywhere looking for these folks all the time, well, but if on a day... Well, they have a phone number folks, attached to the solicitation, I assume, or they're pretty bad. Uh, no, no, no. Some of these are... Uh, they're newspaper uh, clippings. Oh, they're are newspaper. Paper, you know what I mean? Oh, they're newspapers. And they're not really oh, I've never seen attributable to anybody. Oh. We had one in our... We had one in the Beachwood area that was getting in there once a week that um, 
it 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 was very hard to trace its its roots, basically. I've or, seen the ooh. van. I've seen it come up my street. The guy throws it out both sides of the window. You got a better chance of getting him for a speeding violation than he's reading that sign. That's what I mean. But <laughs> except, that's what I mean. Except, I'd be happy if the paper stayed in a plastic bag. Right. These folks exactly. doing this are already on notice. The townships everywhere have empower their or empower their their citizens to say please don't do this and empower their local police departments to do something about it so the guy driving his van through the through a neighborhood who's throwing these out of both sides of the van into every house that he sees he's got a duty not to do that if there's a sign that says no advertisements or no handbills or whatever it is we're going to say you can say and if the cops pull the guy over and say you know you're not supposed to do this and maybe the person gets a ticket. Maybe the person cleans up the ones that were left in the properties that don't and have. So you're going to give that guy a ticket? The guy giving him out? Yeah. Well, yeah, because he's the guy violating the law. All right. He's the guy putting, throwing something on your yard that you don't want. Where right. does the sign have to be placed? I mean, how big of a sign are we talking about? But you know, here's one of the problems. The guy's doing this, yeah. truthfully. They're out there at 9, 10 o'clock at night. I mean, are they going to see a sign? Some of them come at night, but some of them come during the day. I've some seen them during the midday. day. Some come during midday. Yeah, when there's Depends nobody on what your neighbor around. Is. They get paid by how many they throw. Right, yeah. and they throw. <laughs> They're oh. not looking. They're just right. this way, yeah. that way. They're just throwing them. You know what? Discriminately throwing them. Who cares? There's an ordinance. If the homeowner wants to do it, they can do it. Whether they see it or not is irrelevant. Yeah. If they want to do it, it's there for their option. Yeah. Know what, what I'm saying? I'm just... I think in, in the magazine that they're sending you, there is a, a, a label there of where this is coming from, the advertisers. Bag. It's on the bag. You know what? We're not forcing I, them to put the sign up. Yeah. It'd be tough to enforce. I mean, that's... The I think they, don't want it, they don't want it. It does give the police, I, I guess, the option to... Uh, if right on the door you have a door. sign there, How'd you throw it? the police can't the do anything that's the if time there's time. no sign. But if there is a sign at your house, then the police can. Well, just I think it's going to be difficult for us to enforce. I see the van running around like everybody else at different times of the day in different neighborhoods. Um, it's going to be a tough one to enforce for more part. I, I, yeah. I think that um, everybody should take a look at the existing language of the code. It's um, in Chapter 111, it's Section 15. And right now it's saying no person shall throw, deposit, or distribute any commercial or non-commercial handbill, periodical, or newspaper upon a premises if requested by anyone thereon not to do so, or if there is placed on said premises in a conspicuous position near the entrance thereof a sign bearing the words no trespassing, no peddlers or agents, no advertisements, or any similar notice indicating any manner that the occupants of said premises do not desire to be molested or to have their property privacy disturbed or to have any such handbills left upon the premises. Persons requesting non-delivery of a newspaper or periodical shall do so in writing by certified mail to facilitate proof of notice under this section. So right now, we already have it. You know how many people are going to do it? in place mm -hmm. that has the same language on the signage <coughs> that you can put on your property or you can take the initiative to allow the township to take some enforcement action by sending out a certified notice, um, let, let, let me certified you, mail to the publisher. Laura, let me ask you a quick, 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 quick question about this. Oh, yeah. These guys that come by with the vans, they have to get a permit, right, from you? No. No? No. 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 So what well, my thinking is, is that if we enforce the permit, maybe, from these companies, that residents could sign up on a list, and they have a list of properties that they're not to throw. It's commercial free speech. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, the, per the permit is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be hard to go after that, because you already It's have going to be hard to go after mail. this. Yeah. Uh, where people, I mean, I go home every day, there's. My mailbox is full of ads every day. Yeah, so is mine. My driveway, I've, I've I seen, you know. My Wait, but those are, but no, no, but those those advertisements, well, no, I mean, if your mail, the stuff that comes in the mail that comes from the U.S. Postal Service has been, you know, paid for and it's delivered to your house by a postal employee. And we have more faith, David Berkowitz aside, in postal employees than we do in guys in vans, you know, in panel trucks throwing things out the window. 
So, Larry, I'm still trying to understand the sign. We regulating what? Well, type okay. Of sign? Understand this: we currently prohibit anybody from throwing a a handbill or a flyer into any property that's temporarily or continuously uninhabited or vacant. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this person doesn't have any ideas? He's driving down Winfield, which house is vacant and which house is somebody right. in, and he's keeping them out. But it's against the law. And we put the burden on that person not to be distributing things and throwing them into the driveway of an uninhabited home. So And they still I don't, do it. They do. But if the police decide one day when they have nothing else to worry about in the township, <laughs> looking forward to that day when they have nothing else to worry about the township, and they just happen to be on Winfield Drive the day that somebody is driving the van down Winfield, throwing these into every, into every front lawn or every driveway, and three of those houses are vacant, and two of those houses have, please don't drop this stuff on my lawn signs, that's the day that that guy behind the, behind the wheel gets a ticket. That's the day the company that hired him gets a call from the police department that says you've got to police but this a little better. And there's a, a, an also a problem with this is right now, if you put a no trespassing sign on your front door, that theoretically means that they can't put a handle on your, you know, they can't throw them on your driveway. Well, obviously, in most houses, you can't see the no trespassing right, nobody can sign, see that which door. was part of no. the concern. I, I just, I, we're not imposing a burden on these guys that, that distribute these leaflets that they don't have to deal with everywhere and the burdens we haven't already imposed on them. So I, I don't see any problem to giving our citizens the comfort that if they put something in their front lawn that makes clear to this person who's like throwing things out of their window, a couple of will. that they shouldn't be throwing it into their driveway or their yard, that if they're caught doing it, our police have something to say about it. I don't think there's a problem with that. And I, you guys know I'm not a big police power guy, okay? I'm not, I'm not eager to be having more and more people arrested and more and more people bothered. But this is to make our, our residents, there are a number of residents who don't like getting these things in the yard, and we already impose restrictions on these folks who are doing this already. So what's the harm? Seriously. Uh, gentlemen, I just want to take note that by ordinance, we will have to be out of here in 12 minutes. Um, so, and we do have other stuff on the agenda to cover. Oh, yeah. Um, so if we wish to take this discussion any further, perhaps we could do it at the meeting, yeah. uh, next week or. I think that's a good idea. Good idea. Okay. And on next on the agenda, uh, there's a, <clears throat> I'm going to skip around here. There is a sanitary sewer, uh, planning or there's. Let's see, we have the sanitary sewer planning module at 1235 Steel Road. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? The purchase of uh, the Public Works sanitation trucks, there's two of them. There's one of them. And there are the two police department kiosk units. I want a Brooklyn and one at Oakmont. There, I, I had a question ahead. about that. Have, have, we, have we looked into, um, for the kiosk parking meters, um, whether we can start using cards as well? This one does have credit cards. This one, has this credit one credit. will be able to do credit cards. It's identical to what uh, Law Murray and Radner has. This will do coins, uh, bills, credit cards, as well as once it's up and running, you can use your uh, smartphone. Okay. Um, but even our, our current meters can take a card. You'd have to go prepaid card. So any of the regular parking meters along our roadways, you can go to the police department, buy a pre prepaid card, and use that as a credit card. Uh, but the, 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 this, these two kiosks for the Oakmont Municipal Lot and the Brookline Municipal Lot, they're, they're in desperate need to be replaced. Yeah. yeah. And right. But but they're not. Are they going to allow the key card, the township card, the parking card, to work? Um, you know what? It's a good question. I don't know. Probably not. They don't not. now, right? Probably not. Yeah. But uh, to be honest with you, I don't think we're selling too many of them. I didn't think so. John said we don't know about them. I don't know. No, I mean, I think, you know, you can just use a credit card and mm -hmm. that, that's the way to go. And even now, and cash. I mean, people are using their, use cash. You get a barcode on your phone and right. you swipe it. So. <laughs> I don't know. There is, a, a, let's see, an appointment for the civil service alternate position. You still have to feel... Um, we still have to do. There is the ice rink advisory board, the vacancy committee, and then the individual wards for their senior citizens and EAC. There's a proclamation. 
uh, for Eagle Scout. And last, there is a fairly lengthy first reading on the restoration of service providers and also the adding of provisions for restoration and service and services providers. Chief, if you could give a synopsis of that so there will be as few questions as possible. Um, over the past few years, from going back in my tenure as a fire chief and a police officer, whenever we have a serious incident of a house fire, or when people are at the lowest point of their life and they have considerable damage to their house, uh, these uh, workers <coughs> show up and trucks come out of nowhere and try and get the homeowners to sign an agreement that they are the representative to their insurance company and to take over the repair of their property. Uh, they represent themselves mostly that they are agents of their insurance company when they are absolutely not. As recently as three weeks ago, on Brennan Drive, we had a house fire during the day. It was not serious, but it was concerning enough where uh, it came over the radar that there was sort of some fire showing. Within 40 minutes, three repair trucks showed up uh, from all over the area. I always confront these guys because I don't want them going after the homeowner thinking that they are their insurance company. After, what are you doing here? Well, I was dispatched by emergency services. I, well, who called you? <laughs> emergency services. I know they're just listening to the scanners. Uh, we were so concerned about it because it's getting more and more prevalent. We asked Lori, uh, Joe Hagan got an ordinance from Ben Salem, and we asked Lori to um, modify for Howard for Towns, and this is where you are today. So, this is to protect the homeowners who are at some of the lowest points of their life uh, if they have a house fire or a serious emergency in their house. So, there was some control um, and safety for them. Now, currently, uh, we, we don't contract ourselves, but Delcom, the fire board, who dispatches our fire service has two uh, companies that we use on a regular basis. One of them being Mellon, I think Mellon maybe Johnson, I'm not sure, but they, they are Delaware County companies that we use on a regular basis. They will call if, we, if the homeowner desires, they can't get a hold of the insurance company. Because 3 o'clock in the morning in bad weather, we want to secure the house as quickly as we can. So they'll come out and do a board up, and then we know that they're not going to have the homeowner uh, to say that they're a representative of the insurance company. So that's where we're at. With this uh, um, order, right? No, I don't. Yeah, and we, um, <laughs> and as the chief was saying, we have two provisions. One is an amendment to the uh, contractor's licensing section to add extra provisions for restoration service <coughs> some special criteria, additional insurances, um, and the other is to create a whole new chapter in the code um, relative to uh, these services because the only thing that we have that's akin to this is the duty towing regulations where the police call in a tow truck at an accident scene. So it's very similar to, the, to those regulations. It doesn't fit in with the vehicle and traffic like the duty tow does. So we discussed creating a new section. Um, what we don't completely have <laughs> worked out yet is um, the penalty provision. So the P4 is missing a penalty provision. And it, um, we have that, it, Kelly Sullivan from the Jim Burns office is looking at that to see whether it would be $600 or $1,000 or what that penalty provision would be. Uh, for people who are making solicitations at a fire scene, for instance, or a tree falls through somebody's roof and um, the emergency management folks are on scene, uh, one of these uh, public adjusters shows up or restoration service providers and um, tries to get uh, the property owner to sign a contract uh, at, at that point in time. Um, and we're saying, like, at the scene, you can't do that when someone's under duress. I have no problem with the restoration contractor, but have we looked? There's a Pennsylvania public adjuster law, and we have to make sure that we don't conflict with that. That would be the only thing. I didn't see public adjusters in here. I saw restoration contractors, which I think is totally fine, but we have to be careful because there is a public adjuster law. They have to be licensed. They have, there are specific requirements for them, and they have to have a notice to cancel and everything in their contracts. Yeah, we're not trying to license public adjusters. We're trying to license the restoration right. services providers. People are going to come out and everything up. 
up yeah. and everything, but we don't want solicitation at the scene, and that's the one provision that would apply to public adjusters. Uh, again, it's while the emergency response, is, the event is still underway. And Where is that in here? Because public adjusters aren't mentioned in the ordinance. I didn't no, see it. just have a provision in there about solicitation at the scene. But. Um, no person and no restoration service yeah. company. Yeah. yeah, I just don't know if that would conf There's nothing I don't think. I'm looking at the public adjuster law now that conflicts with that. But what is the I don't penalty know. we impose on towers who don't, uh, towing companies that don't comply with our rules? We don't have a problem with that because the police are always on location, so we don't have the issue in Philadelphia where tow trucks come out of the woodwork. It's yeah. heavily regulated here, and they know it, so they just stay away. So we very rarely have a problem where a tow truck shows up. Well, will it take pass. long for this to, you know, when we enact this law, you think it's going to have an immediate positive effect? They're still going to show up. I know they will, but I feel so strongly about it. I've been, I've been confronting them for years. Oh, yeah. Because I don't think a homeowner, when their smoke's coming out of their uh, roof, that they have to worry about somebody wanting to sign a piece of paper. Uh, I think it's terrible. So, uh, you know, it'll, it's still going to go on uh, because these guys just rotate through. They come from out of state, like, you know, roofers who show up after a bad storm and uh, want, wanting to redo your roof. So it's going to always be there, but at least we'll have some teeth and the police officers can say, that's what I do all the time. All right, that's the additive section yeah. 12, I think additive, it was. Yeah. Dan, do you think we have an issue with um, rendering unenforceable any contract that's entered within 24 or 48 hours of, um, you know, of, of whatever event it is that happens? We don't, we're not getting into the uh, courts. Well, public adjusters, their contracts have to have a right to cancel. So, right, but I'm talking about just, just straight up any contract entered within 48 hours of such and such is void as opposed to voidable. I, I, that's why I'm concerned with public adjusters, and I don't have any real interest in them. I haven't worked with them in a zillion years, but I just know the law is out there. That would be only that would be my concern that we can't do anything that there. There's very specific contents of what their contracts can and can't say and do. So I don't. We just have to make sure we don't conflict with that. The restoration contractors, we could do whatever we want. I think. Yeah. And that's a defined term. Restoration contractors are these people who come in and do whatever, right? Commissioner, Just usually if, if this order says an act or some form of it, before we leave the scene, we will advise the homeowner, you know, just be mm. careful what you're doing, who you sign up with, and make sure that they're legitimate. Uh, our, our concern is at the scene of the crime, and not the crime, but the fire. Uh, I believe if you would see, it's, it's amazing how they just show up. That's, this was, that's this, all right. Yeah, so I think this, keeping the contractors at base is probably the, the most successful thing we can do to help, help people in, in, in the time of need. Mr. President. Any further questions? Gentlemen, do you have any questions at all for the next week's meeting? I had a question. Is it, is it possible, uh, and maybe Jim can answer this, can I make my appointments now because I know the EAC has a meeting tomorrow night? It's not a voting. Yeah, I don't think not it's a, a voting. Vote. Yeah, we don't, have, we don't have to just act. tell the person to show up. Right? Tell them to show yeah, up. It's just a commissioner yeah. appointment. Right. Yeah. You can just tell them to show up. Just tell them to be there. All right, I'll just tell them to be there. That's fine. No, I think you can announce it now because I don't think it's official board action. Right. Because it's okay. just yours. Right. I don't think it's a problem. You can, and just next week. I'll do it again. Just do it. All right. <laughs> Katie Thompson is going to be on the EAC, and uh, Margaret Curlin is going to be on the Senior Citizens Advisory Board. Okay, and I'll announce it next week, too. And I right. should have an EAC person for next week. All right. And a happy birthday to Commissioner Holmes and Commissioner D'Amelio, Mr. Gentilly, and Mrs. Widow. So what a month. What a month. It's the yeah, shortest okay. month. And uh, uh, anything else, gentlemen? Oh, should no adjourn. Second. So moved.